This is going to be a good one for you. A whole wild hog smoke. Welcome back to Teach Amanda Fish Channel. In today's video, we're going to be smoking a whole hog, making some lard, and even making some bacon. A little bit of hunting too. Let's go ahead and get started. So a little bit of background on where this pork came from. The story starts out in Georgia on the Altamaha River, right outside Fort Stewart, Georgia. We're hunting in pines, there's some baiting going on, and that involves scouting during the day and setting up at night, waiting for the hogs to come in on the bait. We used a 308 and an AR-10, as well as some reloads that we did for 300 blackout. I made a purchase of a Sightmark night vision scope that came with an infrared illuminator. And I can tell you, I wish I had some video of shooting a hog with this Sightmark night vision scope, but honestly, the adrenaline was pumping and I didn't get any video of that. As a spotter scope, we did use a Leupold thermal to give us a vision of what was going on out there without turning any lights on. With the ultimate result, being a really good sized sow, as well as a nice 70 pounder, little fella that was perfect for smoking whole in my smoker. If you can butcher a deer, you can pretty much butcher a hog. We didn't do the skin because we don't really have the tools and the, the scalding tubs and everything set up to remove the hair. So it's a skin and then break it down into the primals. That's a beautiful piece of pork belly. For the little 70 pounder, he ended up skinning out nice and he went whole directly into the cooler and I carried him home that way, aged him out and threw him on the smoker. So there's a little bit of early morning prep work that comes with doing a whole hog like this. You gotta split the femur as well as the brisket. Get that whole hog to open up, lay flat in your smoker. If you have any interest in the tools or equipment we use in this video, there'll be links in the description below. I'm telling you this bone saw is, makes quick work of this, no trouble whatsoever. Getting the, the breast there and into the backbone some and get it all spread out so that heat can spread evenly across those thicker parts in both the hams and the shoulders. I don't get real complex on the rubs that I use. This is just simply a light dusting with Lowry seasoning salt. In those parts of the hog where the meat gets thin around the rib cage area, you wanna watch out how much salty rub you put on because it's not as much meat there to, to take up the flavor of that salt. If you don't have a good quality offset smoker, you're gonna to wanna to find one or borrow one or ask a buddy if you can use theirs. It makes a difference. This one's probably from the 1990s and a real quality Oklahoma Joe. Neither rain, sleet, or snow will stop us from doing the smoke. It was a cold, rainy, wet day there, but I just throw up my canopy and get it done. We let that firebox settle out some and then bring the whole hog out. Pretty much from this point forward, it's firebox management. And I've got another video that explains thin and blue and the best way to manage the fire and the heat there. You're pretty much watching it and babysitting it and letting that smoke roll. Knowing that we've got about 12 hours before that hog is going to be finished and all we're doing is babysitting, we went ahead and took that sow, broke her down, and set up to do some lard as well as some bacon. All of those clean pieces of back fat go right into the Instapot and we set that up for about 19 hours on slow cook. During that same time frame, we went ahead and pulled the bellies out, made our salt and sugar cure, threw some maple syrup, and set up to make some maple bacon. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe, hit that notification bell, because some point in the future, I'll show you how easy this process is to make incredible homemade bacon out of raw pork belly. Here you can get a look at the quality of the lard that you get out of that fat back. I can't tell you, it actually kind of smells like bacon and has a sweet, sweet smell to it that makes it fantastic to cook on. 
This was the next day. We're going to go ahead and pour that off, throw it into the fridge, let it settle out, and in just a second here, we'll show you that final product. So good. You can't get much more organic in this. No hormones, no antibiotics. That is straight out of the wild and made into this incredible, useful cooking tool. Throwing this into a jar and putting it into the fridge, and this can last many, many months in the fridge, and if you put it in the freezer, it lasts even longer. Just look at the creaminess of that. Here's a little quick tip for you. Using a coffee filter prevents, when you're wiping down the cast iron, prevents you from leaving all the little flecks of paper towel, which people typically use. Well, now let's go out and keep an eye on that hog and check it out. And there's just something about cooking something with an exit wound in it. Makes it more wholesome. This is right around the point when we hit the stall. And we want to go ahead and put a probe both in the hams and up in the front shoulders so we can keep tabs on pushing through that stall and getting that meat to hit that 198, 199 where we can put it in the rest. So this cook probably took somewhere around 12 or 13 hours to get done. We hit the temperature that we were looking for, and we also had guests that were waiting to eat. This was on Super Bowl Sunday, so we wanted to go ahead and pull this off and get it into the rest. Even during the very end, during the rest, I like to keep that temperature probe in just to see what the meat's doing. At the end of the cook, it's pretty high temperatures, and I expect those temperatures to fade or absorb into the middle so that during the rest, the, the inner portions of that meat cross through that magic temperature of two or three where the connective tissues dissolve and turn into that liquid in the meat. The flavor was absolutely fantastic in this pork, but you can tell it's a little bit more lean than what comes out of the factory farms. This is also a really good tell of a properly cooked piece of pork when that blade bone just pulls right out of the meat clean. I thoroughly enjoyed sharing the successful hunt with you, the cooking of this food, the gathering of the family and friends here, and I hope you enjoyed it too. If you did, Please go ahead and click like, subscribe, share, and come on back for more. You good? Yeah, <laughs>